This video is going to be all about Ohm's law. We'll talk about the different types of circuits, we'll talk about what Ohm's law is, and how we might interact with it as a technician. So what is Ohm's law? Ohm's law is an equation that helps us understand how electricity behaves in circuits. It helps us understand when we build a circuit, we can predict what's going to happen, and when we go to do diagnostic work, if I get a reading, having a good understanding of Ohm's law helps me understand what's really happening and help lead me to the next step. The equation of Ohm's law is E equals I times R, and that represents E for electromotive force, which is voltage, and so voltage is equal to current, we refer to current as intensity, which is the I, times resistance, which is the R, probably the most self-explanatory one in the bunch. So E equals I times R. This helps us understand the behavior between voltage, current, and resistance. The important thing to think about is when we work with Ohm's law and that theory, all those are in their base unit. One volt to one amp to one ohm. And so as we work forward with things, we've got to keep that in mind and we've got to be careful about measurements on, say, an auto-scaling DVOM or bigger measurements like kilo-ohms because they can disrupt that equation. Let's start with a basic series type circuit. The interesting thing about Ohm's law is that it does help us understand different types of circuits. Alongside Ohm's law is a set of laws called Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff's laws help us understand the difference in electricity's behavior in a series circuit versus a parallel circuit. We're going to go ahead and set up a series circuit and work through how Kirchhoff's laws are going to impact the flow of electricity here. I'm going to connect to my positive post up here, go to my bulb, make a connection to my ground point. What we don't see underneath in this board at this point is that this wire from that ground connection goes all the way back to the power supply circuit within. The important thing there is that we've made a complete circuit, which is essentially a circle. The electrons can leave on the positive post and return on the negative side. That's conventional electron theory, is that we're gonna flow from positive to negative. With my light bulb on, I see that my circuit's working. Another important fact for creating a circuit is understanding that there has to be a load in place, which means some type of resistance. In my circuit right here, the light bulb is my resistance and my load. Because it has resistance, it's going to carry current through it, which will create a volt drop. If we work the other way, we could look at how many volts am I starting with, and we'll apply this to Ohm's law. So if I measure at my relevant points, we'll go at the top and the bottom, which is kind of the beginning and ending of my circuit, and I see that I've got 12.04 volts. Because I've got a series circuit with only one load within it, I should be dropping a full 12.04 volts or so at this light bulb. The only reason I say it or so is because connections can use up a little bit as they create tiny bits of resistance. So if I go ahead and measure at my light bulb, I've got a little bit of fluctuation, but 12.02 volts of drop at my light bulb. So there's about 0.02 volts being used up in various connections on this board. We could talk about that in the future. That's something that we spend time on as a technician. If we have volt drops and resistance within connectors, other things like that. But the important thing here is that I'm looking at a basic series circuit, all of my loads being consumed by that individual light bulb. So now let's take it a step further and think about what happens if I had another light bulb. How's the brightness of this light bulb or these light bulbs going to change as we add another one? And how do I do that? I'm gonna take that bulb and put them just in line like this. We want them to be in series, which means that one is going to come after the other. So I'm gonna make a connection here at this top bulb, get a jumper wire, make a connection between these bulbs. And so now the electrons still have a direct path. They only have one choice, right? One path to ground is a great way to define a series circuit. So I'm leaving my positive post up here, going through one light bulb, going through the next light bulb, and returning to ground. And you can see that the brightness of my light bulbs has changed. Because I'm in a series circuit with 12 volts of available voltage at the top, these bulbs both have to share that 12 volts. So rather than one light bulb utilizing 12 volts, now each of them are probably using about six. If I take my meter, I can confirm that. I've got about 6.4 volts going through that bulb. This one's running about 5.6. 
With some understanding about voltage, let's talk about how current works in this system. So current is going through one path to ground, and if I want to measure that with my DVM, I've got to change a couple things on my setup. I'm going to move my lead over to the amp port, make a selection for amps, and I've got to measure in series with this meter, and so that means disconnecting my circuit and putting my leads in place of that connection. As long as my light bulbs come up, I know my fuse is good in here. We've got a video all about how to check the fuses and go through that process. With this hooked up, you can see I've got about 0.172 amps. So how do we know how much resistance is here without measuring it? Let's go back to Ohm's law. I know I've got about 12.0 volts worth of potential coming out of my power supply, and that's going through my circuit. So if we take that 12.04 volts and we put and plug in our amperage measurement of 0.172. Now I've got two variables identified and I can solve for the unknown. So I'm gonna take my 12.04, divide it by my 0.172, and that's gonna give me my resistance value. That gives me 70 ohms worth of resistance going through these two bulbs. Do those bulbs both share that amount of resistance? We saw with the volt drops that they had slightly different numbers. So we can anticipate that their resistance values are a little bit different. The interesting thing about a light bulb is that it's dynamic resistance versus it's static. So the resistance of it actively working versus when it's sitting still without electricity are different. And we can't really measure and rely on a static measurement for a bulb. The reason for that is interesting and it applies to a correlation of heat and resistance. So as heat goes up, resistance goes up as well. That's what happens with a light bulb. As the filament heats and glows to emit light, its resistance value changes. And so we can check that. If I move my meter over to resistance, I've got about 4.7 ohms worth of resistance in that bulb. Let's check the other one, 4.7 as well. So I know that my active resistance based on Ohm's law was much higher than 4.7, and that's because of the heat. As that bulb heats up, I see a greater number. Let's review this series circuit and how Kirchhoff's laws apply to it. So a series circuit has one path to ground. The electrons have to go through both loads. They don't have a choice of going through one versus the other. And so in a series circuit, we know that the volt drops will be the sum and so we saw that my 12.04 got distributed amongst both of these. The other rule for resistance is that my total circuit resistance will be the sum of the individual resistors. And so each of these bulbs, their resistance will add together, and that's what the battery or the power supply is going to experience as a total circuit resistance value. My current in the series circuit is going to be the same at any place measured. That's because of the volt and resistance relationship that occur in a series circuit. Because this wire is going to see the total load of both lights, that means that it's carried throughout the circuit as well. And we can measure that at any point. We had connected our meter down here, but regardless of where I put my meter, whether it was between the two loads or at the beginning, that current measurement is going to remain the same. The other type of circuit that we've got to discuss are parallel circuits. Parallel circuits are a circuit designed with more than one path to ground for the electrons. And so let's hook that up and see what it looks like with our light bulbs. I'm still gonna start at my red lead up here, go to a light bulb, but then I'm gonna stack another lead here and take it to the other light bulb. Repeat the same thing at the bottom. There we go. So now, with a parallel circuit, my electrons have more than one choice or more than one path to get back to ground. They're leaving this positive post. They're met with a fork in the road, if you will, that one can go through this bulb and go to ground, or it could go through this bulb and go to ground. That's the main feature of a parallel circuit, more than one path to ground. What does that do for voltage? Well, you can see pretty quick that the bulb's behavior is different in this case. With the series circuit, I saw that my bulbs both dimmed because they were sharing that 12 volt at about six volts each. If you think about the available potential of this power supply, how many volts are coming out of this plug and going in this wire? 12, right? So if there's 12 coming out of that, carrying on this wire, there's 12 available at this bulb, 
I go through this wire, there's also 12 available here. How many volts now are on the ground side? Should be zero. So both of these bulbs are starting with 12, ending at zero. That means they're both dropping 12 volts. That's where I get the increased brightness from. I can hook up my meter and confirm. The power supply is pulled down a little bit, but 11.95. about 12 volts, 12.01. So they're both dropping about the same amount, and if I go back and double check what my source is, we should be able to see that we're all pretty close, 12.01. This should help me understand that parallel circuits behave quite differently than the series circuit we just talked about. Because there are two paths or two options in this circuit for the electrons to flow, that means the behavior of not only the resistance and the voltage is gonna be different, but current as well. Keep in mind that because we work with an equation like Ohm's law, when I change one variable, it's gonna impact the other two variables as well. So let's start to explore what the differences are. We're gonna unplug this and remove our volt drop. Let's look at resistance values first. Previously, we saw that each of these bulbs were about 4.7 ohms. So if I go and look at both bulbs together, with my leads hooked up, we're looking at the total resistance of the circuit. I'm at basically both connections that the power supply or a battery would be connected to. And we're getting about 2.6, 2.8 ohms worth of resistance. This is smaller because the electrons have two paths to get to ground, and that value is going to go down. Kirchhoff's laws say that in a parallel circuit, that the total circuit resistance will always be less than that of the smallest branch resistance. So whatever the smallest one is here, we can expect that my total resistance will be less than that. And that's because for a given amount of resistance in my circuit, my electrons can go there, but they can also work through other resistors as well, which lowers that total resistive path to less than the smallest. It's a concept that's hard at first, but I think over time it does make sense. If you think about pouring water into a bucket with a big hole and a small hole, the flow is going to be faster than just the big hole because you've added a small hole. That's a rough analogy, but I think it does help make some sense. The last part that we've got to talk about with our parallel circuit is current. How does current behave? Think about our voltage. We started with 12 volts, both branches are dropping 12 volts. Can the current be the same everywhere in the circuit? The answer quickly is no, because I have a choice between the two paths. And if one of those paths has less, re less resistance, then I'm gonna see a difference in the current value. To better explain that concept, we're gonna switch one of our bulbs to a larger, higher load bulb. So we get that hooked up and let's start with voltage and then we'll switch over to current. So with these set up, because it's parallel, I do expect to see they're both dropping about 12. Here I've got just about 11.8 and here I've got very similar 11.9, very similar numbers. So again, they're both using up 12 volts, but you can tell by the output that the current draw is going to be different. Current is what helps me do work. This brighter bulb is taking more current. So let's verify that. I'm gonna switch over to amps and set up my connections. Let's start with the total current for the circuit. So I'm gonna take this lead out from my power supply. I'm gonna put my meter in series. Remember, I've always gotta be in series when I measure. And we'll take a look at what we get. My total circuit current in this case is about 2.28 amps worth of current. So how does that get divvied up or split up amongst these two bulbs? To do that, I'm still gonna have to measure in series, and so I'm gonna have to identify one part of these branches and put my meter in series with just one branch. So let's start with the larger bulb. I'm gonna pull that out and put, move it aside. I'm gonna put my meter leads back where the connections were at, and I get a reading of about 2.02 .02 amps worth of current. From our total, that's a big number, right? And so we expect that this small bulb is only taking about two tenths worth of current. Let's verify that too. Same style of connection, and I get about 0.25 amps worth of current. So we saw that the total that the power supply had to deliver was 2.2, .2, 
My big bulb was using about two amps, my little bulb about 0.2 amps. That's because of their different resistance values and because we're in parallel. If we were to switch those up back in the series circuit, we would see the behavior be quite different. But first, let's talk about all the rules for my parallel circuit. First, voltage. In a parallel circuit, voltage drop of each individual branch is the same as the source. Meaning if I start with 12 volts here, both of these branches and paths to ground have to drop 12 volts. The next one is resistance. The total resistance of this circuit is always gonna be less than the smallest individual branch resistance value. The last one is current. Total current in this circuit is gonna be the sum of the individual branches. Just like we saw 0.2 and two, those added up to get my total current. Now let's go back to the series circuit with this same style setup. So to do that, I'm gonna unplug my large bulb. So here I've got a basic series circuit with two different style bulbs. And so let's go back to that idea with series. I've left my positive post here, gone through my little bulb, going through my large bulb to ground, I complete the path, right? And it's only one path to ground. Notice my small light bulb's lighting up. I'm not getting any illumination from the big bulb. Why does that happen? This is a great visual example that electricity is always going to take the path of least resistance. Now that we understand the two different types of circuits that we could have, let's go a little bit deeper with Ohm's law and reinforce how that theory works. So here I've got just three resistors that are on a board. We'll make some connections and we'll look at the impact in terms of how these behave. So the easiest way for me to do that is to think about what's happening within my board, what I can and can't control. So I've got a specified amount of voltage and potential at this power supply, 12 volts. These resistance values are fixed. And so if I have voltage and resistance fixed, I know that I'm gonna get a specific current output. And so what we're gonna do is measure three different resistance values and see that those currents are going to change. So with this setup, I can move about with this connection and see the different values that occur. Let's start with 100. So this carbon film resistor has got a 100 ohms worth of resistance. I'm at 12.04 volts or so up top, and so I'm seeing about 0.125 amps below. And we know that because Ohm's law. If we Let's take it a step down. What do we expect to happen if we go to 1,000? What's gonna happen to that current flow number? We see it shift down a decimal point. We went from 100 to 1,000, and so now I've got 0.012 amps. That's pretty well expected. We can plug that into Ohm's law as well. The last one that we can do is 10,000, and we'll see some limitations with our meter once we get that hooked up. My meter's reading 0 0.001 amps. And so the nice thing is a whole unit of amps means that I can use Ohm's law, but to get a really good measurement and better definition on this reading, I'd wanna switch this over to milliamps. If I do that, I would see that I've got the same one, two, four number. Again, I've just shifted down a decimal point because I've gone up to 10,000 ohms worth of resistance. And so if we put 12.04 with 10,000 ohms, we'll see that our result is 124 thousandths worth of an amp. That's our short video on Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law can be a difficult topic as we get started if we haven't had previous exposure to electricity because electricity in itself is pretty intangible. I can't see it and it's difficult to get acquainted with a new tool like a DVOM and really have confidence within it. The importance here is to understand the relationship between the volts, resistance, and current and that they interact in a predictable way all the time. That's gonna serve me well as a technician as I go through diagnosing other problems and will help me spot what I need to go to next when I see different situations.